Hi, my name is Maximilian Giel. I'm an outdoor and adventure photographer. And right now I'm here on a road trip in the Engadin. Right now behind me, you can see the Motorrad Glacier, which has been drastically shrinking basically in the last years. But neither that, it's just a really beautiful place. And I recently saw a video on YouTube of Peter Lindgren, um, who was traveling actually to Switzerland. And I was like, he did quite kind some things wrong and ended up probably missing quite a lot. In the end, it's been a pretty fun video, but I think I'm living here in Switzerland since eight years and I want to give you some tips what you should know when you're traveling to this country. So first of all, um, it's a small country based mostly in the Alps. Um, so most of the landscapes are pretty mountain scapes and so which brings me basically to the first thing when we come to distances in Switzerland and if you see like on a map oh it's just 50k 50k can take you in Switzerland one and a half hours um, instead of Germany where 50k a half an hour max um, so that's really important to know the distances and also because it's it's really in the Alps um, as you can see right now it's the 17th of October and it's super winter wonderland and I had pretty hard times to get here in the Engadin yesterday because it's been pretty snowy in the night and I drove over a pass and it's been yeah minus three degrees and yeah it probably would have been better to have a all-wheel drive but I don't have one worked out fine so far but what I want to tell you expect every weather basically every seasons maybe in the, in the classic summer usually we don't have any snow but when it comes to spring till about June and then further on from September October to the winter expect all the time snow and heavy and very different weather conditions so that's that's a really uh, important thing and when you plan your trip and you see like you have to go over passes um, there's a website which is called Alpen uh, like slash um, passe.ch um, I'll link that down below and you can see it here um, where you can see every pass uh, in Switzerland and if it's open or if there's anything to to see about if there's snow on it if you need snow chains you will find it there so that's my very big advice to check before you go that's uh, that will help you and will actually provide that you don't have too much stress because probably when you're here it's a holiday so do everything for it that it is a holiday next up um, here in Switzerland uh, Quite some years back, they uh, actually said that it's just like an, a rule or it's, it's normal that every people or every human here in Switzerland can have the access to really detailed maps. And you can find this map on um, map.geo.admin.ch. I'll link that down below as well. And you can see there um, all the hiking trails, also snowshoe trails, um, and also the ski touring routes. You will find it there. So if you type in the search field like ski touring, you will find all the ski touring routes and you'll, you'll get them displayed on the map. So that's the next really important tip what you should know uh, when you're traveling to Switzerland. Next up. When we come to traveling, we want to know how the weather is, basically. So here are my recommendations where I check my weather. Um, mostly I start with Meteo Swiss. Um, there's an app for iOS and also Android, I think so. Um, it's pretty cool because it's like it, it shows you pretty accurate where the clouds are going to be, which is really important for me as a photographer because I love light and I love clouds, but I love to be above the clouds for sure. Um, that's the first thing. Then the next one is uh, Meteo Blue. Um, that's an app. It, it works worldwide, but it works pretty well. And you can type in your location and also like make locate me. 
and then you have actually this small little thing when you put on this the menu you will find the meteograms and the meteograms is really really cool because you can see how high the clouds are that's really cool so that's the next one and when I look for mountaineering weather there's um, a website called um, mountainforecast.net I think so I'll link that down below as well and that's really cool because you can see how cold and how much wind will be on every height of the mountain um, check that out if you want to go on a, on a climb basically yeah so that's that's the first thing then um, what next you should know next you should know um, so it depends how you how you're gonna stay here maybe you rent a, a camper van um, or you go for accommodations um, so that depends a bit so it's basically um, yeah it's not too hard to find a sleeping spot when you have a camper van here in Switzerland um, but it's not allowed to sleep everywhere one rule is on the passes usually it's allowed to sleep there and on the parking lots if there is a sign that you're not allowed to sleep there so you probably won't sleep there but there are plenty of spots basically here in Switzerland where you can sleep in your van which makes things cheaper and easier for me when I have to get up really early I don't want to drive one hour to go to the to the place where I want to hike up so it's better for me if I can sleep where I um, basically want to go up there and yeah that leads to the next thing. Switzerland is a pretty expensive country, um, but like in every country, you can basically um, look that you don't spend too much money. So that it actually basically depends um, how you actually travel here. Like traveling, traveling is always about how much time you have, because the biggest um, or the, the most uh, expensive thing usually is is the transport so if you have time you can go with the public transport um, if you stay for a longer time maybe three four weeks you really should think about buying the halt tax um, so you get every price from the public transfer half price um, this is pretty good especially if you plan to go to Jungfraujoch or or really expensive places like Sermat then it will help you quite a lot um, to save some money and <clears throat> otherwise I don't can I can't tell you anything about rental cars uh, I had just one uh, one time I had one but it's yeah it's pretty expensive as well um, you can go via Germany and rent a car there maybe it's cheaper but you have to check if you're allowed to go to Switzerland yeah that's like that um, but yeah in, if you if you go for food, um, it's it's really expensive to go for for to a restaurant. Um, so I highly recommend to cook for yourself. And then it's like, yeah, the Migro has pretty cheap or often pretty cheap um, biological food. Um, so that's why I recommendation and there's also Aldi and Lidl where you can save quite a lot if you're here and just like want to cook for yourself I highly recommend to go to these places um, so this will save you quite a lot of money and yeah so uh, you should probably know so if you're not sure um, if you can do that or this um, probably go to the local tourism board and they usually help you out quite a lot um, what's pretty cool often if you stay in a, in a hotel or in uh, or another accommodation it's quite often in summer like that that you get like the cable cars or whatever for free or to a reduced price so this might help you quite a lot and yeah what to say Switzerland is really a really really diverse country so you can have the Italian feeling over there or in the Ticino and you also can have this really really high alpine feeling what you have here um, by the way up there is the, the Pitsbernina with the Bianco Ridge up there and so you got really really different kind of uh, landscapes what you can explore here and it's really worth a trip 
um, but it helps if you plan before and it also helps if you know some locals because then they can usually tell you quite some spots where to sleep, where to go, where to hike, um, how long the distance is. Um, so yeah, that's what just what I wanted to tell you and yeah, I think it's time to show you what I explored on this trip um, so far and you probably will see what I explored even more after I took this video because today is Saturday and I'll stay there here to, till tomorrow um, till Sunday and I'm pretty sure that I will um, get some more footage um, just in a short while I hiked up to a beautiful lake in the morning or I cycled up um, then I went back um, shot a little bit on the Lago Bianco up there and right now I hiked up here to the Motorrad Glacier um, and shot a little bit here and yeah let's see what I'm gonna do tomorrow maybe we'll go over to this valley to the Val Rosac which is really really beautiful that's my recommendation if you're here in the Engadin and St. Moritz really really beautiful over there also over there the lakes are really really cool in the morning or in the evening especially if you got lucky and you've got some some little fog on the ground and yeah in autumn it's basically the best time for me to come here it's also really cool in winter but really really cold and i actually wrote a blog post on my on my website quite some time ago about ski touring around here Pontresina um, if you're looking for ski tours check this post out I also link that down below yeah I hope this was helpful for you um, if you liked the video put a thumbs up and if you want to stay updated with more content about shooting about traveling about photography videography yeah subscribe to this channel there will be more for sure. Right now I'm working on a big documentation about a trip I did three years ago. This might take a while a little bit because I want to do a really, really cool um, documentary about that. But yeah, it will be here on this channel and it's worth to subscribe. So thanks a lot for watching. I see you in the next video and I wish you a great day.
Also das schauen wir uns jetzt mal an. Nam nam nam. Oh shit. Oh shit. No. No, Dex. Ja. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. So soll es sein. Disco, disco, disco. Uh, uh.